All right, Math 2, Unit 6, dilations, Section 1, dilations. All right, so we're supposed to graph the image of the figure using the transformation given, and the transformation on all of these is going to be a dilation. Now, a dilation we would normally think of as a shape getting bigger or smaller, like something could get two times in size. That would be a dilation of two. Now, whenever we talk about it with a coordinate plane, a lot of the times it means it gets farther and closer away from the origin also. And the origin is this spot right there at zero, zero. So the way that we do these is we're going to start off by listing what is the point that we have. And now number one only has one point. We've got R is, and we're going to say, what is that? At? One, two, three, three, five. R is at three, five. Now this dilation of one half, we're going to make it, it's going to be half the distance from the origin. But the way that we do this is that we take, and we say, well, one half of x and one half of y. Or you could say x over 2, y over 2. You could say then it's, it's writing the same thing. So this is going to be r prime is 3 over 2, 5 over 2. And now I normally wouldn't do this, but since we're dealing with, with a coordinate plane, I'm going to change these into um, proper fractions, into mixed fractions. So R prime is going to be one and a half, two and a half. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to plot a new point at one, two and a half. Oh, excuse me. It's only one and a half right there. One and a half, and then one, two and a half. And there's my R prime. Now, a way that you can check yourself on all of these problems and all dilation problems is you should, or you can, you can, you, you have to always be able to draw a line through the origin and through the two points. So I am a terrible artist, so that didn't work out, but that looks a little bit better. There will always be that line that you could draw through those three points. All right, let's look at number two and see how it works. U, we're going to start off by saying, well, U is at, what is that, 2, 1, 2, 1. Now, this 5 halves here tells me that I'm going to have to take 5 halves X and 5 halves, oops, 5 halves Y. So this U turns into U prime. And it's going to be 5 over 2 times x, which in this case is 2, and then 5 over 2 times y, which is 1. And this is, well, 5 over 2 times 2. Those 2s cancel, and we've got a 5. And then 5 halves times 1 is just 5 halves. And we could write that as a mixed number at 2 and a half. So u prime back over here, to graph it on our, on our graph, we're going to go over 5 and up 1, 2, and a half. There's our point, u prime. And we always want to label our points. Don't just put a point there, label it. And again, we can draw a line through the origin and these two points. All right. Number three. Now we have more than one point. It works the same way. It's just really we have... Number three has four separate problems in it. Number one and number two only had one point. Now we have four points. So we have four different things that we have to deal with. So um, we'll start with W. W is at negative two, one. X is at one, four. Y is at two, zero. And is that a V? V is at 0, negative 3. So we're going to multiply each of the numbers in the point by 1 quarter. So W becomes W prime, and we have negative 2 times 1 quarter is negative 1 half. And then 1 times 1 quarter is 1 quarter. X becomes X prime. And we have 1 quarter 1, right? Because I multiplied this 1 by a quarter, and then I multiplied 4 by a quarter. 
Next up we have y prime. This is going to give us 1 half 0. And then v prime is going to give us, well, 0 times a quarter is 0. Negative 3 times a quarter is negative 3 quarter, or negative 3 over 4. Now we just have to plot these points. So I'm going to have w prime is at negative 1 half, 1 quarter. So it's going to be somewhere right in there. X prime is going to be at a quarter over and 1 up, so somewhere in there. Y prime is going to be at 1 half 0. And then V prime is going to be at 0, negative 3 quarter. All right. This is kind of a terrible example because they get so small, but we can kind of see that there's this shape. And something to note about the shapes is the shapes will always have the same general shape, right? If it starts off as a triangle, it's going to end as a triangle, okay? Number four, dilation of 2.5 about the origin. So let's start off by writing down our points. We've got, we'll start with I. I is at negative 1, 1. J is at 0, negative 1. And H is at... 2, negative 1. So I'm going to multiply each of these by 2.5. So i becomes i prime. Negative 1 times 2.5 is negative 2.5. 1 times 2.5 is 2.5. j becomes j prime, which is 0, negative 2.5. h becomes h prime. 2 times 2.5, if we type that in a calculator, that's going to be 5. And then negative 1 times 2.5 is negative 2.5. All right, let's graph these. I is at negative 1, 2, and a half. We just kind of have to guess there. 1, 2, and a half. It's going to be right there. And we can see here that a line could be drawn there. That's a good way to check yourself. After every point, just go ahead and check in your head. Would that work? All right. H, or we'll go to J next. We're at negative 2.5, which is going to be right there. And then H is going to be somewhere right there. Yeah, over 5 and down 2.5. We can draw our shape. And that's it. All right. Number 5. Now, number five says find the coordinates of the vertices of each figure after the given transformation. I don't know if we read the directions on the front page. It says graph the image, all right? This says graph the image. This one says find the coordinates. Whenever it says find the coordinates, you don't have to graph it. You just need to list what would the new points be. So in this one, it's going to be what is I prime, what is J prime, what is H prime. So we start the problem the same way. We're going to list out i is at negative 1, 1, j is at 1, 0, and h is at negative 1, negative 1. And then we're going to multiply each of those numbers by 4.5. So we're going to say, well, i prime is negative 4.5, 4.5. J prime is 4.5, 0, and H prime is, well, we have negative 1 times 4.5, negative 4.5, and then we have negative 1 again, so negative 4.5. Now, this here is our answer there. Okay, it's not a graph, it's those points. I think this is actually a little bit easier because then you don't have to count the graph the graph tally marks again. Number six. Number six. Now we're doing a dilation of two, so we're going to have to multiply by two. We're going to have, if we were to write this as a formula, it would be 2x and 2y in our point. That would be what our new point would be. So we'll have j, k, l. And we need to grab those points from in the graph. So j is at 1, 2, negative 2, 0. k is at 2, 1. 
and L is at 1, negative 1. Now I need to multiply everything by 2, so I'm going to have J prime is at negative, well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 0 times 2 is 0. K prime, I'm going to have 4, 2. And L prime, 2, negative 2. And this right here is our actual answer. Let me do that in a different color. All right. Number seven and eight say write a rule to describe each transformation. So really on all of these, we really only need one point. We don't need a bunch of them. Let's look at, um, which one do we want to do? I normally like to pick one that has a line on the axis, but it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I like to do that, but that's just what I do. We have V is at, what is it at? Zero, one. And then we have V prime is also listed. It's the blue one. It's at zero. And what do you think that is? Is that at one, two and a half? I think it's two and a half. Zero, 2.5. So we want to know, what would we multiply one by to get 2.5? That's what the question really is. So we could write this a little bit differently. And we could say, 1x equals 2.5, and this one isn't very exciting because it's just x equals 2.5, and our answer is 2.5. So number seven, there was a dilation of 2.5. Number eight, maybe it'll be a little bit more exciting. Let's look at, um, well, I kind of want to use g, but those aren't on the hash marks. So let's use f. We have f is at, what is he at, negative 2, 2. And then f prime is at negative 3, 3. Now, after you pick this out, just pick either x or y. This one, I'm just going to use x. And you're going to rewrite it as negative 2 times something. You could use x equals negative 3, right? We took the first term, we multiplied by something, and we get the last term, right? That's how we did the problems up here, right? To get, um, to get from negative 1 to negative 4.5, we multiplied by the 4.5 up here. We're kind of undoing that to figure out what would we dilate by. So here we have to get x by itself. We divide by negative 2 on both sides and x equals 3 halves. And that's it.